Hello everyone, uh, welcome to part 5, module 6, data communication. So, um, so we are continuing our discussion on uh, circuit switching concept. We already seen the basic idea about circuit switching and uh, the, the part 4, I think we discussed the uh, different phases and the set of data transfer and the teardown phase of circuit switching. Now, uh, let's see a particular scenario like a connection, uh, how this connection is established over a typical public public circuit switching network, that is uh, the normal telephone network. It's taken uh, as an example. Uh, some terminology, uh, just for your understanding and described here. Um, again, uh, taken this uh, picture from Stalin's text. So here you can see on uh, end machine like a telephone uh, which is trying to communicate with another one. So uh, so at this side we have uh, this end office where this telephone is directly connected. Uh, for digital communication we have a digital uh, private branch exchange a PBX uh, instead of this switch uh, it will be there and that will be handling the digital signal instead of analog signal so this is our normal analog communication so it is connected to a normal switch when it comes to uh, the digital communication the d particular intermediate device should be or end device should be capable of supporting it so here we have a digital PBX and now the connection between the end device and the nearby uh, node switching node is called uh, the nearby switching node is called end office and this connection is what is called a subscriber loop and subscribers are nothing but the end devices okay or the users which are connected to the internet now this the same switching node you can see here here so here you can see four switching nodes but uh, we have a different terminology so here it is called end office here it is called a long distance end office that means from this this will be connected to uh, some remote distance and here we have another long distance end of uh, office or uh, some kind of uh, switching node and uh, the final end office that is connected actually the i mean end office is a term that is connected with the uh, one which is being uh, very nearly connected to the to the subscriber and other is uh, intermediate switches we simply call as like uh, long distance office and the connection between the different uh, uh, i mean switching nodes is what we call as a uh, trunk so here we have a connecting trunk and this is something long distance communication so we have an intercity trunk and again we have a connecting trunk like that just terminologies only uh, let's see that subscribers is what the device that is attached to the network and subscriber line or subscriber loop it is the link uh, between the subscriber and the network it is also referred to as subscriber loop or local loop now almost all local loop co connections use twisted pair wire because it is a short distance communication right so twisted pair is enough uh, and uh, you know twisted pair its features everything now uh, the length of a local loop is typically in a range uh, from a few kilometers uh, to a few tens of kilometers and that is the reason we are using uh, the twisted pair uh, communication communication for that purpose okay so that about the subscriber loop or uh, the local loop now exchanges are the intermediate devices it can be the end uh, office or some long distance office the switching um, senders in the network are what we call as the exchanges a switching sender and that directly support the sub subscriber or direct that is directly connected to the subscriber is what is called as an end office uh, particular terminology now typically an end office will support uh, many thousands of subscribers being connected in a localized area now end offices are connected to each other through some intermediate switching nodes and that is uh, what we referred as the um, long distance office or uh, something like that now trunks are the uh, the connection channel that is the branches uh, between the exchanges and the trunks carry uh, multiple voice frequency circuits uh, using either FDM or synchronous stadium some that means uh, normally they are multiplexed channels okay uh, multiplexed links and for multiplexing the frequency division or uh, time division multiplexing will be involved uh, in the trunks. Uh, now, if you are looking at the connection establishment, it will be like sometimes we want to have a connection between two subscribers which are connected to the same end office. Then we can have a, a loop uh, kind of structure just like this. Now, if the one of the subscriber is connected to one end office and another one is connected to some entirely different switching node, then through the intermediate exchange node, uh, through this uh, trunks, we need a connection, something like this. So, this dotted line actually represents the active connection inside the switching node. Okay, so this is a switch 
switch and we will see the configuration of a switch in subsequent discussion and here uh, the switch is closed in this way here it is connected between i mean from this port to fr this port so th here we have different ports like this so inside the switch we have an active connection that is being represented by the dotted line and now we have the uh, trunks uh, which are connecting the long distance uh, end of uh, i mean of um, long distance offices or in, in the intermediate switches okay so here we are so, so simply we can call all these devices as exchanges so end office is an exchange where the subscribers are directly connected uh, just this one and this one and other exchanges are the intermediate one intermediate exchanges <laughs> And if you are looking at a typical circuit switching node, that switching intermediate switching node, you can see that we have a digital, uh, it is nothing but a digital switch, okay. And this switch itself is containing a network interface element and a control unit like that, okay. So first we will see what is the role of a digital switch. Its function is to provide a transparent signal path between any pair of attached devices. Like what we seen in the previous diagram, it may be uh, two uh, devices which are directly connected to the end office or it may be uh, something that is remotely connected so we have to provide a transparent uh, signal path between them so the path is transparent in that it appears to the attached pair of devices that there is a direct connection between them even uh, in, in, in the previous example we saw in the situation where there is a direct connection something like this but in this case it is not direct connection in uh, using intermediate switches we establish this connection but still it is a responsibility of the end office that you should give a feel to this device c and device d that uh, c and d are directly connected but uh, in reality it is not and that uh, difficulty should be hidden from the user so that is the meaning so of transparent connection okay so uh, the, the connection uh, the path is transparent in the sense that it appears to the attached pair of devices that there is a direct connection between them but actually it is indirectly connected to that intermediate switches so typically the connection must follow i mean allow a full duplex transmission that means both the uh, way communication should happen at the same time that you know how to plus full duplex so full duplex is what is preferred now the dotted line cpu in the previous figure as i already mentioned in the figure insi inside the switch symbolizes the connection that are currently active now network interface element it's actually part of the digital switch okay so it represents the hardware uh, that is uh, needed to connect a digital device such as a data processing device and a digital telephone to the network uh, that whether it is a telephone network or a data processing uh, device uh, like a computer whatever it is that subscriber that particular device is uh, connected to the switch through the interface so interface is that part like uh, that is where that ports everything is uh, visible i mean if you are looking at a switch like this uh, this is the interface part where these ports will be there and through that ports uh, i mean a subscriber it can be a telephone or a data processing device that will be connected and this pa part of the switch is called interface network interfacing element and there is a control unit also for this switch okay if you are treating this as a switch switching node okay uh, together it makes the uh, digital switch so network interface element is clear now what is the responsibility of the control unit that is the software part which is um, taking care of the connection i mean the connection establishment the maintenance of the connection the termination of the connection everything is taken care by the control unit so it performs three general tasks first it establishes the connection that is during the set of phase so using that address everything it will see whether that outgoing link is free accordingly uh, it will send a request to the other switch in that way it will try to establish a connection and this is generally uh, done on demand whenever somebody is requesting that time only connection will be established and at the request of the attached device to establish the connection the control unit must handle the acknowledgement uh, handle and acknowledge the request that means whenever a request is coming from a attached device it should be forwarded to other switches and like that it has to handle the request from the end devices and also once the connection is established the acknowledgement should be given back so that is uh, all, all these things are done by the control unit and it de that is determine if the internet destination is free and construct a path through the switch and uh, in addition to the the handling of the request and acknowledgement uh, process it has to determine if the destination uh, whether it is uh, destination is free if it is de uh, free it has to construct a path through the switch now second the control unit must maintain the connection now once the connection establishment is done then data transfer phase will be done during that data transfer this connection should not be terminated okay now third uh, finally uh, that is a tear down phase that is the control unit must tear down the connection either in response of a request sometimes the end parties will be asking for the tear down uh, from one of the parties or it may be uh, due to its own reason some network failure or uh, device failure that also could be the reason anyway in all this case the termination of the connection should happen and that is also control 
controlled by the control unit so this network interface is the part which is connected to the subscribers and control unit is the one which is hand taking care of the uh, connection establishment and maintenance and termination process so together th these two are the uh, this is a kind of hardware and this you can think of as a software uh, routine both are part of the digital switch so that is the idea now i just want to convey one more concept here that is a blocking and non blocking network the t t terminology itself says that blocking means whenever you try to have a connection that your request may be blocked due to uh, some uh, network traffic or some other reason non blocking means you will not get uh, such a feeling you will get it means if you are looking at your uh, i mean uh, telephone calls uh, you know sometimes it will be blocking like uh, you may not be able to connect to the receiver but it is not like that the receiver is busy the uh, you are not able to connect to the receiver even though the receiver is free so th that is a way Uh, receiver is busy then you can connect uh, but when it comes to the data communication i mean the normal network uh, typically we have we have the non blocking communication so we will see what it is and important characteristics of the circuit switching device is uh, whether this particular circuit switching network is blocking or non blocking whether it is supporting non blocking or blocking communication blocking occurs when the network is unable to connect two stations each other as all possible paths between them are already in use so a want to communicate with b and between a and b uh, there will be a number of uh, channels available but uh, unfortunately all these channels are occupied and that is the reason uh, it is uh, the network is not able to give a connection between a and b even though a and b are free uh, so blocking network is one in which uh, such blocking scenario occurs so hence a non blocking network permits all station to uh, be connected in uh, means just opposite blocking here there is no such issue whenever two machine want to communicate to each other uh, the connection will be ensured right uh, i mean there will not be a situation where uh, all the channels are occupied in that way we will be providing resources so at once uh, and grants all possible connection request as long as the called party is free so whenever if the called party is busy then we can't do anything if the called party and that is the receiver is free definitely um, the connection is established so that is what is called a non blocking network so definitely we have to provide uh, it with that many uh, i mean resources and only it is possible right so when a network is supporting only voice traffic uh, blocking configuration is fine because voice you know for a small duration of time only you will be doing your communication and that time even though it is engaged you can try after some time that is not a big issue so a blocking configuration is generally acceptable in case of our uh, normal os based telephone communication so because it is expected that most phone calls are of very short duration and that uh, therefore only a fraction of the telephone will be engaged at any time so even though it is the network is engaged immediately after some small duration of time someone someone will uh, free up the resources and so that it it can be given to uh, the other party i mean who is requesting so it is not a big issue in that but however when it comes to the data processing application that is our uh, typical network uh, what we are uh, thinking of data processing devices are involved the, these assumptions may be invalid in the sense Uh, the communication is not short duration even though you may s establish a connection but you may not be actively transferring data but still the connection will be active such scenarios are there right for example uh, maybe it is for a data entry application you want to enter some information to other uh, server or some other machine you simply started you open the connection and you keep on entering the data and sometimes you want to take a break but still you didn't close the connection like that so a terminal may be continuously connected to a computer de definitely for hours of time it is not like our uh, phone calls so hence for data uh, processing application uh, there is a requirement for a non blocking or nearly blocking nearly blocking in in the sense the very low probability for blocking such configurations are preferred in case of our data uh, applications but for voice application blocking uh, configuration is fine okay so that is the idea uh, of blocking and non blocking circuit switch okay uh, with this we will wind up and uh, in, in the next part we will see some of the switch configuration okay and uh, follow following that we will move on to packet switch thank you